Hey gamers, this is Ed Park, aka Togrim. You're watching Tog Vlog, episode 7. I wanted to talk about a recent thread that came up on the Guild Wars 2 forums and it has to do with copyright for videos and YouTube monetization. A poster named Coffee said on my Guild Wars 2 gameplay videos that I posted on YouTube, I recently got a matched third party content warning. And it says, your video may include the following copyrighted content, visual content administered by Play NC. So he asked for clarification of the content policy. And a community staffer from ArenaNet replied, named Gail, replied, you cannot use the monetization system for YouTube or other services. In other words, you cannot make money from our products. Uh, but I don't know or I don't think she realized the implications that this would have uh, on the gaming community or the YouTube uh, community because, you know, it, it triggered a really uh, very upset response. And... I wanted to clarify exactly how the whole copyright monetization stuff works from a high level and, and please keep in mind I'm not a lawyer uh, but I want to share with you my understanding and then talk specifically about you know what happened with Guild Wars 2 and ArenaNet and Gail's later response. So from a copyright standpoint if you if we look at what YouTube says, video game content may be monetized if the associated step-by-step -step commentary is strictly tied to the live action being shown and provides instructional or educational value. And what YouTube is hinting at is a doctrine known as fair use. Um, it permits limited use of copyrighted material without acquiring the permission from the rights holder. So examples of fair use include commentary, criticism, news reporting, research, teaching, library, archiving, and scholarship. And in terms of determining whether fair use applies. Uh, there are four factors that are looked at, the purpose and character of the use, the nature of the copyrighted work, the amount and substantiality of the portion used in relation to the copyrighted work as a whole, and four, the effect of the use upon the potential market for or value of the copyrighted work. Uh, now, the hard thing is there isn't an explicit checklist that you can look anywhere, and if you do these certain things that you're definitely in fair use land, which means that you know your videos should be monetizable, uh, but in general, there are things that you can do, like YouTube already states, uh, make sure the commentary is instructional, educational, and that it's tied to the actual game footage. So that, so that's that, you know how the copyright and fair use stuff works. And then as far as how the monetization is applied, when you upload a video to YouTube, a lot of channels these days, YouTube has kind of really you know opened up their policy for monetization. So most users can submit a given video for monetization. And there are two sets of things that happen, as far as I can tell. Uh, one, when you upload the video, uh, they run a, a system called content ID matching, where they look for the digital fingerprints of copyrighted work to see if you've included it in your video. So it could be you know, music, copyrighted music. Uh, it could be video footage, for example, a trailer for a movie or whatever. And you know, if YouTube detects that you have a content ID match, uh, they'll typically deny you uh, monetization or outright, they'll reject it request or they'll ask you to provide supporting documentation to prove that you have uh, the appropriate permissions from the copyright holders. So the second thing that YouTube does aside from the content ID matching is um, it seems like they may have a manual review of videos by in you know a YouTube employee and this is why you may have noticed you know if you do vlogs that they may get approved really quickly relative to video game uh, you know commentated videos which may take longer to get to get approved and you know, the thing to remember is that the person who's reviewing the video may or may not be a gamer. They may not know what you're talking about, etc. Um, the guidance that I've received from an attorney is that when you, you know, write the description for your video, um, try to emphasize the instructional educational value of what you're providing, right? It can be helpful. And let me tell you one thing that people often do, which is actually not helpful. It was in that thread, uh, you know, from Coffee in the Guild Wars 2 forum, the first response is from someone who says, you can post content, but you need to add the disclaimer that everything is the property of the game developer. In this case, you know, Play and See ArenaNet. Uh, that's actually that actually legally doesn't hold water, from what I understand, uh, because when you post that in your description of your video, you basically are acknowledging that you're knowingly infringing on someone else's copyright uh, without having the appropriate permission. And it's it's kind of like uh, driving down the highway, speeding, passing a cop car, and then honking and yelling at the cop and saying, "Hey, police officer, I'm speeding." Okay. So, you know, I think that the tough thing is for, you know, a lot of YouTubers is they'll, they'll put videos up, let's say, of gameplay footage, and sometimes it is or is not approved by YouTube. Remember, this is YouTube checking it. YouTube, as far as I know, in the process of, you know, their monetization, they don't go out or research or trying to determine who has the potential copyrights for a given video that's submitted to them. They simply can't do it. It's not scalable. Uh, nor do they go and contact those copyright holders to see whether or not you, YouTuber, have permission. You know, if you think of it from a business perspective, that just doesn't scale. So... 
let's back up to this particular situation with Gail and then look at what her response was later. So I, I think Gail, you know, stated, replied in the thread without you know, knowing the poop storm that was going to cause on the on the interwebs. And she came back later and clarified. And she says, I'm going to clarify a bit. Technically, it's against the current Guild Wars 2 content in terms of use for people to make money such as things as monetizing a Guild Wars 2 video. However, we support people sharing their experiences with our game. Heck, we love people doing that. So while we want to do the right thing and accurately relay what the terms of use says, because that's often the question, uh, we do not take action when fan sites support themselves via ads. We don't take action when creators of fans place videos on ads. In other words, we don't flag such videos. And you know this is important to understand because you know, what can happen so after YouTube does their review of monetization and either gives you a thumbs up or thumbs down, that's all within YouTube as far as I know, the developers can choose for a particular video to submit uh, a copyright claim. Now in the vast majority of situations they don't do that. You know, Obviously uh, YouTubers making videos about their product is typically good for the game. It, you know, it generates a lot of attention. You know, it's free marketing. It's crowdsourcing, basically. So most game developers or publishers won't take action against a video unless you know, they feel that for some reason the video is not appropriate. What she's not saying is that we all have their permission, carte blanche, from Guild Wars 2 to go ahead and make videos. What she's saying is you can post those videos. We probably won't do anything. Her response is, is very telling, and it really reflects the attitudes of most gaming developers, which is you can do it. You don't legally have our permission to do so, nor are we going to grant you the permission. Um, however, you know, go ahead and do it. We're not going to do anything about it. So, again, it, folks, there have been nerd raging on the internet about this uh, to, to our ArenaNet, and frankly, ArenaNet's policy is fully aligned with what all the other game development companies do you know, in the industry. So you just understand, you know, how the YouTube, you know, the copyright monetization process works and what game developers do really materially. I, I don't believe that any of this is going to have any impact on most YouTubers or, or people like me, what I do, because, you know, what Gail says, what ArenaNet and NCSoft are doing, that's the way most game companies uh, do their business. Let me know your feedback in the comments below. I hope this video has helped shed some light on, on the whole controversy. And really, in my opinion, there is no controversy. Take care. I hope you enjoyed the video. What people tend to have as a frame of reference is this, you know, game X is greater than game Y is greater than game Z. And I think that's a pretty myopic viewpoint, especially when you're, you know, when, when gamers are doing this or fanboys are doing this to the point of uh, having...